Hey guys, if this is your first time to my channel, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Emily and today I have yet again another pay or stay away for you. I am only one minute in and I am already hot in this room. Thank you, ring light. But let's go ahead and hop right on in to the first product that I'm going to be talking about today on the pay or stay away list. And that is the Natasha Denona Mini Blush and Highlight Duo. This is available now and it retails for $19. And boy, do I have a story for you guys. So I might already have bought this and my means of getting it were questionable to say the least. So it was supposed to launch, I believe, on Wednesday on Sephora and on Beautylish and on Natasha Denona's website, of course. Trendwood had posted the night before this was supposed to launch that it was going to be launching in the morning. So I went to bed all happy and giddy and had my debit card out and ready to roll as soon as I woke up and got the okay that this was ready for purchase. But in the morning when I woke up and got ready to go to work, unfortunately, when I checked, her Instagram page she said that this actually was going to be delayed and I was so bummed out because when I was looking through the trend mood comments everyone and their mother was saying that they were gonna buy this because this is only $19 everyone can finally try Natasha Denona now it's only 19 bucks I mean granted that's still not the most inexpensive thing in the world but for Natasha Denona that's pretty damn cheap compared to her freaking $90 blush palettes that she came out with earlier this year so I figured this was gonna sell out. And of course, as we all know, in desperate times, we do very desperate and questionable things. So I went on the Natasha Denona website to double check and make sure that this wasn't launching today because I didn't understand why she would post the night before saying that it was gonna launch and then the morning of say, nope, never mind, it's not gonna launch. So I went to Natasha Denona's website and there was a little browser pop-up that popped up in front of me and I kind of exited out of it without even reading it because I really just wanted to get this as soon as possible. This was on the homepage and said it was available now and that's what I was focused on. So I just clicked right out of a message that was trying to warn me that the security system for the website was down and I guess their security license had expired. I don't really know, but I didn't pay attention to it. So I purchased this and I paid 15 bucks for shipping to get this from Natasha Denona's website, might I add. But then later on, when I was reading through the Chen Mood comments, some people were saying that it was available on Natasha Denona's website. And then I read that the website was insecure and that all of your information could be stolen. Basically what happened was Lime Crime was happening with Natasha Denona, but the difference is Natasha Denona had that browser pop-up that kind of told everyone what the situation was and not to really purchase from there right now until they renew their license. Of course, I was in full panic mode, thinking that someone could steal my information at any second, steal my debit card, steal God knows what else. I mean, granted, you're not gonna steal that much from me, but it's still all I got, so I had to call my bank and basically cancel my card, and now I don't have a debit card. So maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a bad thing. Who really knows? But I got this in the mail a couple days ago and I really did jump through hoops to get this. So yeah, that's that's my little story. I know it's very long, looks like I rambled on for like five minutes about it, but it was a very stressful time in my life. But I do have this in my hands now. And the kicker to this story is that the day after I went through this giant debacle and fiasco, this dropped on Sephora and Beautylish just the day after. So if I would have been patient and just waited one day, then I wouldn't have had to cancel my debit card and pay $15 shipping and just go through all these hoops for you. But that being said, I did pick one up from Sephora as well. Don't ask me why. It was an impulse thing. I felt like I needed to have two. But now that I have this in my collection, I don't need two of these. So maybe you might see that in an up and coming giveaway, but I mean, who really knows, you know? No one no one can really tell what's gonna happen in the future. So if I look a little bit different, that is because it is me from the future, guys. I really needed to pop on here for a moment and just talk after I just saw what Trend Mood 
just posted about. So please ignore the ugly face and the haggard makeup because I've been lunging around all day editing my videos and eating pizza. So I probably don't look nearly as fresh as I did this morning, but this is just too important. I have to talk about this. So Trend Mood just posted that Huda Beauty is going to be releasing another rose gold palette. It's called the Rose Gold Remastered Eyeshadow Palette, and it's going to be available on May 22nd. Trendwood's post says that the Rose Gold Palette is back with a new formula of eyeshadows and a new packaging, which includes a mirror. And I have the old Huda Beauty Rose Gold palette. And granted, I have depotted some shades in here so it looks a little bit janky. And I have put in some new shades from other palettes where I have depotted the Huda Beauty shades. But I paid upwards of $70 for this palette. And I got it when it first launched. So I hadn't really watched any reviews on this. I didn't really know about the formula. I didn't know that these kind of creamy foiled shades up at the top were gonna be really hard to work with and that they were gonna transfer horribly. So I put all my faith and trust into this palette because I thought it was beautiful. And then once I got it in the mail, I did use it for a while and it was kind of my go-to for a couple months back in 2016 or was it 2017? I don't remember. I'm always losing track of time. But nonetheless, I used this a lot when I first got it. And then once I started to get into more eyeshadows and find other formulas that I absolutely adore, I strayed away from this one because to me, this palette is not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad at all. I think it's a good palette. I do like it. I think that there are some pretty cool looks that you can get with it and you get a decent amount of colorful shades at the top there. But is this palette worth $70? Hell no. So I'm just kind of confused why Huda would come back with a remastered version of the Rose Gold palette. And let me tell you, that palette looks absolutely beautiful. The metallics look incredible. The packaging looks great. It looks like she even improved on the colors that she chose for the palette. And I zoomed in on the photo. And from what I can see, some of the shades are the original Rose Gold shades. And some of them seem to be from the Desert Dusk palette, or maybe they're just a new shade that she's adding in with the older shades. I don't know, but there are some in there that aren't in here, but the majority of it is the same. But honestly, the new one looks so much better. It looks a thousand and a half times better than this dinky little thing right here that I have put through hell and back. So I'm not mad because no one made me spend my money. Okay, I know that. No one made me spend my money. That was my own my own wrongdoing. But I just really wish that companies wouldn't do that because it just makes the people who bought the original one just feel like a giant piece of watered up garbage. Because I don't really reach for this palette and I did like it in its time but I just don't reach for it anymore. It just hasn't really aged well with all of the new formulas that I've gotten to know and all of the new things that I've gotten to love when it comes to my makeup style and my makeup preferences. This just isn't at the top for me. And I have a feeling that the new palette might be absolutely amazing. I mean, those shades are basically the same ones in here, but they just look more rich and more pigmented and Something about the shimmers looks a lot different. These were chunky and kind of creamy and they were kind of hard to work with. You could not pick these up on your brush. And the shimmers or metallics, whatever they may be, in the new one look really, really smooth and they look really velvety. I mean, granted, I've only seen one promo photo of it, but it's a damn good promo photo. That's a nice looking palette. But I feel really bad for everyone who bought this and I know a lot of people bought this because I know everyone had high expectations for Huda because she makes good liquid lipsticks, she makes good lashes, so everyone knew she was gonna make a good palette. But this was just overpriced. It's a good palette, don't get me wrong, don't come for me, it's definitely a good palette, but I don't think it's worth the $70 price tag that I bought it at when it first launched. So, I was looking in the comments on the Trend Mood post and good lord is the peanut gallery angry. They are very, very angry, and honestly, I do understand. Now, for me, I can kind of rationalize 
You know, Huda didn't make me buy the first one, I bought the first one. And I do see why Huda would want to take a good idea that she came out with and improve on that. There is nothing wrong with that. But I feel like it's just kind of like a slap in the face to people who did buy it. <sighs> because I feel like she could have come out with a palette that had kind of similar colors and just switched it up a little bit more. This palette had a lot of neutrals with a few pops of red and pink and then these pops of the kind of creamy, metallic, flaky, chunky shimmer shades. The new palette looks to follow a similar color scheme, but in my opinion, the colors look a lot prettier. Like I said, it does look like she has swapped some of the older shades from this palette out for some newer ones. And the newer ones look better in my opinion for my personal preference. There was a really hot pink in this one and it looks like she's replaced that with a nice matte strawberry color and I just like the way the new one looks. Maybe it's just because it's brand new and pretty and shiny and it's just a marketing ploy and that could definitely be it, but I like the new one. And if I didn't already own this, oh my god, I would be on that in one second. But I'm not gonna buy that because I have this and unless she marks her prices down to the $50 range, maybe even the $40 range, then I'm not gonna buy it because I don't think that it's worth it. At least I don't think this formulation is worth it. Chenwu did also upload a picture of some swatches that Huda did of that palette in. Those swatches of the metallic shades look so smooth and buttery and creamy and shiny and I'm, I'm all about that. It looks stunning. Now I just want to compare the way the swatches look in this palette to the way the swatches look in the new rose gold remixed or re-edited or I've already forgotten the name of it. Granted, swatches barely mean anything, but it will kind of show you the level of intensity when it comes to the shimmers in this palette versus the shimmers and the metallics in the new one, and it'll kind of show quality difference. Now, you can't really judge an eyeshadow by the swatch because you have to test it on your eyes and maybe these shadows perform differently on their eyes, but I know from personal experience that the shimmers in this palette didn't work for me at all, and the foiled shades weren't bad by any means. I think that a glitter glue is definitely needed with them, and every time I've ever used them, I've applied a really thin layer because the more I built it up, the more it would transfer. And I just want to show what these swatches look like compared to the new ones. I, I know, I got rambly, but... So here is Moon Dust, which I did see that this one is in the new palette. So I'm really going to dig my finger in there and let's try and get a really nice concentrated swatch. So here is what, oh my god, I'm flipping you off. <laughs> so here is what the swatch looks like on my finger. Now to just show how it looks like on the skin. Okay, so we have a really kind of very, very soft, almost satiny shimmer shade. And it doesn't look to have too much pigment. It's basically the color of my skin, so it's hard to see. So I apologize for that. But this just isn't that impressive to me. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. But it's a swatch. I mean, we can't really compare swatches. But I just want to show what it looks like to me. And I have no proof for this. So this is all just me kind of talking out on my butt. But I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I can swatch an eyeshadow and kind of see some swatches and get a good general idea of what possibly the shadow might be like. And sometimes I get a palette and I end up swatching, say, a shimmer shade like this, where it's very, very satiny, very light, not very reflective at all, and I just kind of know that's not really my cup of tea. Now, that doesn't mean that this shade isn't for everyone and that this palette isn't for everyone, but it's not my thing. And from what it seems like, a decent amount of people in the Trend Moods comments agreed with me. I mean, I didn't say this to them, but they were basically saying my thoughts and more. Like I said, they were pretty angry. And I don't know. I just wanted to come on here and talk about it because I get it. I get why Huda would do that. But I really just wish that she would have taken maybe some shades that she really wanted to improve on from the Rose Gold palette and taken some new shades and made a new palette out of it. I mean, people would buy that still because it is a new formula. It might be the same color, it might be the same concept, but the metallics are definitely a new formula that I feel like would work better for a lot of people because these glittery, foiled, creamy shadows were not super user-friendly for everyone. So I feel like going the route of a nice buttery metallic that can be easily picked up on a brush 
and really improving on your formula is to be applauded. I don't think she would have angered so many people if she would have just made a new palette out of it and been up front and said some of these shades are repeats from the Huda Beauty Rose Gold palette because Anastasia does that all the time. She puts freaking Vermeer or whatever that shade is from the Modern Renaissance palette in a bunch of other palettes and she's upfront about it and no one really minds. I mean, some people might look at it and think, okay, now I have dupes, but no one is really complaining because they knew what they were getting themselves into. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. I'm not mad, but I know a lot of people are and don't be surprised if you hear other people talking about this on their videos. God, I feel like a drama channel right now, like hopping on camera, reporting the latest news. No, no, no. Drama channels are not really my thing, except Rich Lux. I love him and watch all of his videos, but that's a different story, okay? Anyway, guys, I'm gonna get back to eating my pizza and stop rambling my mouth off here and Let's go ahead and get right back on into the rest of Pay or Stay Away. So moving on here, the next product that I'm going to be talking about that is being released is the Juvia's Place Warrior Palette. This palette is retailing for $21 and is available now on their website. So when I saw this palette be released, I didn't really think much of it, to be honest, because I'm sure you've heard me say this by now, but I am not into neutrals at all. I don't like neutrals. I like light kind of champagne -y gold or champagne -y pink shades, but other than that, I'm not into neutrals, even in the slightest. So this didn't really appeal to me. This is not my demographic, but I do think that Juvia's Place kind of needed a palette like this in their line. They have a lot of fun, colorful, out there an interesting palette and they have the original Nubian palette which is a lot more kind of subdued and it's more warm neutrals but other than that palette they don't really have a whole lot of very basic everyday work colors for people to buy and I feel like if they're gonna expand and be a bigger brand and reach a bigger audience I feel like it is necessary to put out a palette like this even though Juvia's Place is known for their colors and a lot of their fans and supporters really kind of go there to buy colors. They do definitely want to consider appealing to every demographic they can. I mean, that's how you make money. So I think this was a smart decision on Juvia's Place's part. Now, I wouldn't say that for every single brand. Don't get me wrong. But God knows we don't need any more neutral palettes in our lives. But I do think that this was a smart decision on Juvia's Place's part because now they can appeal to people who need a nice work appropriate palette and people who really do kind of like the more neutral, subdued, more calmed down looks. So I'm not gonna be buying it because this palette was not made for me, but Juvia's Place is an amazing formula. And if you've been needing a neutral palette that's not too expensive, then maybe this one might be your guy. These are my absolute favorite things in the world. Trader Joe's milk chocolate covered peanut butter pretzels. I know, it sounds amazing, doesn't it? Well, it's my cheat day and my stomach is growling. So excuse me while I eat one of these. Next up on the pay or stay away list is the new Maybelline Soda Pop Palette. This is going to be released in summer in late August. So we still have a little bit of time till it actually comes out, but we have seen some promo photos of it so far. There isn't a set price for this yet, but typically they range from $10 to $14, depending on where you go. I believe that was the price bracket for the Maybelline Lemonade Craze palette. It just differs on where you go because it is a drugstore item. So to be honest here, I think that this palette is super, super cute. I really like the idea of making soda pop colors because if you think about soda pop, it's really colorful, really sweet, really sugary, and really bright and intense. And I definitely get those vibes from this palette. I feel like there's more pops of colors in this palette than there was in the Lemonade Craze palette. That palette was kind of a miss for me, even though I never tried it. The color scheme was kind of a miss for me because if you're going to give me pink lemonade, then just give me a bunch of pinks and a bunch of yellows and I don't really need tans and browns and whatnot. So this palette to me is kind of a step up from that. Now there are still some deepening brown shades, but it looks like you do get a nice variety of different shades of soda pop in here. So they have a cherry soda, so they have a matte cherry color, and then a metallic cherry color. Of course they have grape soda, so it looks to be a matte, grapey, bright purple color, which looks absolutely stunning. Then you have blue raspberry, which is a deep navy matte, which I think is just so 
beautiful with those berry tones and the cherry color and the purple. So I actually really like this palette and I think that it's absolutely gorgeous and I definitely want to pick it up because I've never tried Maybelline eyeshadows. I've never really tried a whole lot from Maybelline to be honest here. If I ever have, maybe it was like a mascara, maybe an eyeliner, but other than that, I've never really ventured into Maybelline. And I really wanted to pick up the Maybelline Lemonade Craze palette, but if you saw my video where I shot my stash and picked out shades from my collection that are very similar to that palette, I already had that palette plus a bunch of contributing shades that I feel like rounded out that color scheme a lot better. So I didn't really need to pick that palette up, and I haven't really seen too many good reviews on it, so I'm kind of glad that I held off on that guy, but this palette... I really, really want to get this, and I want to just push myself and go out of the box and do a navy, berry, smoky eye with this. So I already have looks planned, even though this doesn't release until August. I already have looks planned for this, and I really, really hope that it is good quality because I know that the other one was kind of questionable. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but as far as this palette's concerned, I definitely am interested. And even though August is a million years away, I am more than likely going to be picking it up. The next thing that I want to talk about on the pay or stay away list today is that Lady Gaga is coming out with her own cosmetics line. Now I know, this market is really oversaturated and it seems like every celebrity, to me at least, and I feel like a lot of other people feel the same as this, but it seems like they are just kind of hopping on the bandwagon because makeup has really grown in popularity over the past couple of years. And so all of these celebrities are just dropping these makeup lines out of nowhere. I mean, there are people who are dropping makeup lines that I have no idea why they are dropping makeup lines. With that being said though, if there was one person to drop a makeup line that is a celebrity, I personally feel like Lady Gaga should be it, and I am so ecstatic to hear that she is actually going to be dropping a makeup line. Now, a lot of these celebrities that are dropping their makeup lines aren't really known for having memorable makeup, but when you think Lady Gaga, you think meat dress and crazy fun makeup, and she is absolutely gorgeous. I think she's one of the prettiest people ever. She has had so many memorable looks and makeup looks specifically throughout the 10 years that she's been super famous. She's had countless looks, she's changed up her style a lot, and she goes pretty out there with her makeup. She's very colorful and does not give two farts about what anyone thinks about what she is wearing on her face or on her body. And you go girl because I freaking love her and I respect her and her confidence is something that I hope to have someday. But she's known for all of these makeup looks and I really do feel like when she comes out with her line, if she were to make an eyeshadow palette, I feel like it would be a really colorful, interesting and unique palette because Lady Gaga is just an interesting person and she definitely has interesting ideas and unique ideas. So I trust her 100% and wholeheartedly that she will bring us good makeup. So I really, really feel like this was needed in the beauty community because I feel like she has something to add to the market that we don't see often. I don't feel like she's going to bring us neutral palettes or things that we can get from ColourPop. Nothing against ColourPop, I was just throwing a random brand out there, but you know what I'm saying. I feel like she will definitely bring something new to the table and bring something interesting and innovative and fun. So I am more than excited about this and I can't wait to see what she has in store for us. So the next item that I'm going to be talking about here is actually a collection. And I'll let us just kind of wait here for a moment and let's think about all the collections that have been coming out lately and let's think about the one that really surprised us the most. Yes, I am talking about the Kris Jenner and Kylie Jenner collab. Now this marketing campaign was really clever in my opinion. Chris basically hacked Kylie's account and changed the name from Kylie Cosmetics to Chris Cosmetics and on the box that you actually get the products in it looks like it says Kylie, it has her brand logo on it and then it looks like Chris has just crossed it out and wrote Chris on the box. So I think it's really cute and she released this for Mother's Day and it is available now because today is Mother's Day and it dropped this morning. So I'm sure that it is probably sold out already and if it's not sold out already it will Will probably be sold out in the next couple of hours. So it looks like the collection consists of one face powder palette, which is $48, one eyeshadow palette, which is $42, one lipstick, which is $17, a matching lip pencil, which is 
Then there is a lip set called the Momager set. <laughs> Fun name. It looks like you get a combination of the glosses, the velvets, and the mattes, and that is $42. And then you can pick up the whole entire bundle for a whopping $150, which I'm sure that a lot of people will. There is also a keychain that Chris has released of her giving everyone the middle finger. And to some people that might be kind of crass, but I think it's kind of cute just because Chris, you know, she's a mom, like, like she's just goofy. I feel like she's really goofy and I feel like she doesn't really take herself too seriously. Now, granted, I really don't know that much about the Kardashians. I'm going to be completely honest here. A bunch of people are really going crazy over the names of some of the eyeshadows in the palette, and people are going crazy over the names of the highlighter palette and the names of the highlighters in the palette. I think the highlighter palette is called You're Doing Amazing, Sweetie, which, to be honest, I don't really know what that is. I think it has something to do with Kim in a photo shoot because that's what I heard on someone else's video. But I don't really know that much about the Kardashians, I'm not gonna lie here. I really don't know where all these quotes come from, but I can understand that a bunch of people are really kind of fangirling over this. Now, I'm not super ecstatic to buy anything from Kylie Cosmetics, and it's kind of the same situation with this collab. Nothing here is really calling to me. I think that the lipstick shade, the actual bullet lipstick itself, is really beautiful, but it kind of looks like Kat Von D's Double Dare, which I already have. The eyeshadow palette looks to be all cool tones, which I typically stay very, very far away from. And I'm just not super into anything that this collection has to offer because I have things like it in my collection or it's just not really my cup of tea. But I really do feel like this was an amazing opportunity that they kind of seized to do this collaboration with Chris. And I don't know how it didn't come earlier because if you think about it, Chris is their manager, their momager or whatever, and supposedly... Chris was the one who leaked Kim's sex tape, which led to her being famous, which led to them having a bunch of money. So if you think about it, I think it all goes back to Chris. I think she was the one who started all of this, and I think that she really kind of got this empire going and moving forward. And I think that it's nice that she released this on Mother's Day. I think it fits the theme really well, obviously, because Chris is their mom and it is Mother's Day, but I kind of like it. And I think the packaging is cute. And I think that this actually really does suit the brand. Now, it kind of seems a little young, and I'm not going to say childish because I don't think that this is a childish collab, but you do get that keychain with the middle finger, and then the lipstick bullet has middle fingers all over it, and then you get the kind of funky names that are happening there that are basically just quotes from the show. And I think that it's definitely a bit younger of a vibe, but if you think about Kylie Cosmetics, a lot of her fans are a lot younger. And I feel like with Chris, going back to what I said at the beginning of this very long rant, she doesn't really take herself too seriously, and I feel like this kind of suits her personality from what I've seen. So I actually do kind of like this collab, but I just don't need anything from it, so I'm not going to be buying it, but are you picking anything up from it? Because I haven't really seen any reviews on it yet. I'm intrigued to see what everyone thinks of it. And the last item that I'm going to be talking about here on Pay or Stay Away today is the new Makeup Revolution Tropical Paradise Palette. This palette is actually a collaboration with a UK YouTuber and influencer, and her name is Makeup by Tammy. I'm subscribed to her on YouTube, and I've seen quite a few of her videos, and I think that she is just hilarious, and she is beautiful, and she does amazing makeup, and I feel like Makeup Revolution really hit it out of the park with collabing with someone here. I feel like they partnered with someone who knows a lot about makeup and isn't afraid to dip into color, and she did not hold back on color in this palette. It looks like this palette is going to be retailing for $15. You get 23 matte and shimmer shades, and you do get three transition shades that are on the bottom of the palette. So it kind of gives me the Kat Von D vibes where you have the transition shades kind of separated from the rest of the palette, and it makes it a little bit more user-friendly in my opinion. Now, as far as me buying this palette goes, I don't really need anything like this in my collection right now. There does seem to be a decent amount of colorful shimmers, and there are some colorful mattes as well. But there are still some neutral toned mattes and shimmers, and I just don't need anything that basically has neutral tones in it at this point. If I'm going to buy a palette, I'm more than likely going to be buying a palette that's really kind of out there and doesn't really have a whole lot of neutral tones in it because I have no use for neutral tones in my collection, and whenever I get a palette with neutrals, I very much regret it because I don't end up using it and then I just waste product and then I just waste my money 
And I really don't want to be wasting my money right now because your girl's trying to pinch some pennies. But I do really feel like this is a beautiful palette and I really do feel like this color scheme and the situation that she picked out for the palette really would work on a lot of different skin tones. I feel like if you are very pale, you could definitely pull off a lot of these deeper colorful shades and it'll pop more on your pale skin tone. And if you are very deep, I feel like this would show up on your skin tone as well. Makeup by Tammy is a woman of color and women of color know how to get their colors right because a lot of times with these colorful palettes that come out and these colorful single shadows that come out and whatnot, they don't even show up on people with darker complexions. So I heard Makeup Struggle saying recently in a video that if you really want to look for suggestions on colorful makeup, turn to melanin infused girls and boys because they are gonna know a good colorful shadow from a crappy one. So it really makes sense to turn to people with a deeper complexion to find out which shades are actually truly pigmented and which shades actually are pigmented enough to show up on these deeper complexions. And that means that it's probably a really bomb shadow. So I don't doubt that this palette is going to be poppin because I feel like she really put together a good color scheme and I feel like this is definitely gonna show up on a variety of complexions. But that is going to be wrapping it up for this week's pay or stay away. I feel like every single time I film one of these videos, I end up rambling and talking your ear off and I apologize for that. I don't know what happens. I just get really kind of carried away and excited about these products and I end up on like 10 different tangents. So my apologies. I do hope that you consider subscribing if you have not already. I am doing pay or stay away every single Monday and I have all sorts of other makeup content on this channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I hope you are having an absolutely amazing day wherever you are, and thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye!